Hello there guys, uh, this is my 2017 safety preparedness video. Basically all it is is this picking one time of the year to go through and detail inspect my kayak safety gear. Um, I'm going to break this video up into basically three different sections. Uh, first one will be my on hand safety items and then the second part will be a walkthrough on my kayak. And then the third part will be actually going out to Shark Channel, jumping in the, sh the uh, waters with the sharks and making sure that I can do my re-entry correctly. So anyways, the first part here is um, basically just kind of bypassing those assumptions that we have. Um, I've got this so-and-so safety item, therefore I'm good to go, okay? Uh, the problem with that is, is that if you're not constantly checking to make sure that that equipment is working, you're gonna be startled one day when you need it and it doesn't. A good example is my good old trusty uh, dive knife. If you can see that, nice and rusty. Uh, usually I have it right here on my uh, life vest. Problem happened though is because of saltwater corrosion, um, even though I have a plastic sheath, it corroded enough where it basically wedged itself in there and I wasn't even able to pull it out. I had to use a hammer and a screwdriver to work it, finally work it out there. So that's the kind of stuff that you just, you just gotta take some time every once in a while to make sure that even though you've got it, that it's functional. A second item on my vest is uh, just repairing. I've had a, uh, a whistle on a little cheap lanyard. Of course, the lanyard was connected, or the whistle was connected with a little piece of metal. It corroded, broke off, so I just had it stuffed in one of my pockets. Not the best place to have an emergency whistle that you want to use to notify an oncoming vessel that you're there and not run you over. So I'm going to fix that with a nice zip tie. Um, also go through all your zippers and clips to make sure that that functional. If you're not able to shut it and lock down your vest, it's just going to pop right off or it's going to ride up on you. Uh, same thing for adjusting it to make sure that it fits on you correctly. You want it to be snug, not overly tight so you're not going to use it, but not loose enough so if you fall in the water that it's not going to get sucked above your head or you're going to fall out of it. The thing you want to remember is that it's there for when you're not even conscious. If you, for whatever reason, pass out and go in the water, that life vest put on correctly is going to keep you tilted back with your head above water. If it's not done correctly and you're sagging in it, you're dead. So very important to just make sure that maintenance is done on that. Uh, the other things that I've got is I carry a safety dry box. In there I keep my um, VHF radio and then I also carry a, a second GPS, handheld GPS, which I have hardwired so that I can plug it into my main battery box where my fish finder runs on. Uh, generally what will happen is like constantly happens is my fish finder dies every six months and I don't want to be 15 miles offshore not in the visibility of land and then my fish finder GPS goes out and not being able to know where I'm at so I could put in, pull this thing out plug it in and I've got a second handheld I also do have a compass but I just keep that on the kayak attached there so I've got that um, same with the uh, VHF um, I've gone through this is my third battery pack and my second antenna because of corrosion. It just kills everything. So although it's better to have it on you and available, I felt it was better to have it safe in a dry box and that I know for sure it's going to work versus not knowing if corrosion got to it and so forth. Uh, in the box you could add duct tape, you can add the band-aids, you can add flares, signaling devices. Now that I have a solid dry box that's not going to leak, I could pack it full of whatever I think I might need out there. So anyways, that is the first section, which is kind of my on-hand safety equipment. The second part, like I said, we'll do next is uh, doing a walkthrough on my kayak. So check it out. All right, so for our end of year, beginning of 2017, I like kind of just do a quick inspection. Uh, we're looking at just make sure there's no cracks that have shown up. Uh, no areas have been really too worn out. I mean, I'm, I run my uh, kayaks pretty hard, so get a lot of scratches and stuff, but I don't really care about that, but you wanna make sure there's no cracks, make sure there's no wear holes that are pushing through. Uh, check out all the insides here to make sure there's no scupper hole cracks or 
leakages. Uh, what I'll do is I'll end up uh, flipping it over and just filling the hole with water and uh, seeing if there's any leaks that I'm not seeing it cracks. But since I'm on the water a lot, uh, if there had been any problems, I mean, it'll show up in those regards as well. So I know how much water it takes on on a, a normal trip. And then just the well for the uh, pedals, Mirage Drive, and then again, another high wear spot. You just want to check to make sure there's not any sections that are incredibly thin that need to be repaired. Uh, I am doing a reinforcement today on my back keel where it's going to start rubbing through again so I'm going to put another big patch on there and just reinforce it. Uh, I get this a lot just from uh, car topping and dragging my kayak. hits this corner spot when I'm lifting it up onto the edge of the car. Um, I've also gone through, I'm switching over to the uh, thousand pound uh, Hobie uh, rudder lines especially in these higher uh, wear areas. So I've had uh, breakages a few times. Uh, just check to make sure your standard lines are all good. Check your pin. Make sure you have a spare pin and where it's located and how to uh, replace it in case it does break. Um, you could do some uh, Mirage Drive uh, oiling and stuff. I don't oil mine, but you can do some general maintenance, tighten them up as they get a little sloppy. And just basically go everything, give it a good once over, and because a lot of times you get lazy and don't do that. And just make sure you're still seaworthy. Another thing I've been working on is fixing this plug here. The little plastic uh, nipples broke off on this. So if you've been watching some of my videos, I've been having to put a bunch of crap up front here. It wasn't uh, because I just wanted all that stuff there. It was because no nipples, this thing would just pop out and the water would just flood in. So I just made a uh, some copper tubing that went through it and then uh, put some JB Weld there. And that is fix. So another tip there. Yeah, this is the reason why I'm doing all this nickety knack stuff. Still blowing like crazy and raining. But hopefully the new year's better. Okay, we're out here on Shark Channel for the last part and the most important part, which is the uh, kayak re-entry. So of course you can go into your swimming pool, you can find some nice calm flat area that's shallow and you could do your re-entry, but realistically, how relevant is it, okay? Most likely the wind you're going to be falling in is if you do the offshore stuff especially or you do uh, any lakes or rivers, it's going to be deep water. Um, most likely it's going to be some sort of out of the ordinary circumstances that's going to send you overboard and being real choppy, windy, wavy, cloudy, rainy is a good time when that's possibly going to happen. So those are the times that you want to be prepared for. So that's kind of why I'm here. Um, the sharks part of it will help you get a little bit more uh, expedient about things. But I mean, that's they're here and I'm gonna be there. So you just gotta learn to live with it or don't go in the ocean. <laughs> so uh, that's the test for today. I'm gonna go ahead and hop out and hopefully hop back in and uh, be certified for 2017. Now, just to kind of clarify things on the system that I'll use and I'll probably will do a entry, re-entry uh, type for uh, kayaks. Um, most likely I'll do it on my tarpon 140 just the the kayak itself since that's what most people would have but it works the same way here uh, the way I'm gonna do it okay is to be very efficient about it and the way you're very efficient about it is one not do it how your panic mind will think you have to do it which is you're gonna be drifting in the water with your hopefully your PFD on your legs are gonna be straight down you're actually, and they're going to be kind of, because of the way buoyancy is, you're going to be holding onto the side of the kayak, and your legs are actually going to start sweeping underneath the kayak. Because the way your life, 
jacket works is that it tends to float you on your back. So you're going to be at a kind of a worse angle where your feet are underneath the kayak, you're holding on, gripping onto the side of it, and in your panic mind you're going to go, I got to get out of here because the sharks are going to eat me. So instantly what you start doing is struggling from a set point and you start gripping and then you start kicking up and you're trying to lift your whole body, your wet clothes, and you're trying to kick and you're kind of at a backwards angle to try to get up and over and you struggle, struggle, get the other side, you flip over your kayak, you wear yourself out and it's just not good. All right, so what I do is, one, take a deep breath, okay? Just, you gotta get out of that panic mode, okay? Laugh it off, have a good laugh at, okay, I fell in. Okay, get your kayak righted if you're upside down, boom. Don't worry about your stuff sinking, it's gonna happen, you can't save it, let it go. Uh, it's a lesson learned. Primary thing that you wanna focus on is getting back in your kayak. So once you've got it right, what you're gonna do is gonna be basically like you're pushing your kayak perpendicular, okay? So your kayak is gonna be up and down one direction, and you're gonna be perpendicular to it, facing the center of it. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna be in that same position as if you were pushing that kayak towards shore or pushing it towards somewhere, pushing it basically. You're gonna push it sideways though, perpendicular, the harder way, but that's the way you're gonna act it. You're gonna be right in the middle and you're gonna be using your legs to push that kayak. And the reason why you're gonna do that is, is that's gonna take your feet from up and down in the water column to all of a sudden you're going to be flat with the water column. You're going to be on the top of the water and you're going to be pushing and you're going to have momentum pushing towards that kayak. And you're going to have your arms kind of out, okay? So what you're going to do is you're going to do it as a momentum. As you, your body comes up, your kicks, feet are kicking, okay? Then what you're going to do is you're going to pull with your arm to get you going even faster and then you're going to pull up and push your body and kick up so that your main torso gets on top of the kayak. So you're just gonna skim the water and on top of the kayak, and then from there, you're just gonna rotate your butt over and then swing your legs in, okay? It's a lot better to do it all in one motion. If you start breaking it up, you lose that momentum, and then all of a, all of a sudden, you're trying to do a full body weight pull up. And some people, if you're in shape, it's no big deal. You can get in and out of your kayak all day long. Um, I do it for free diving and stuff, so it's not that big, so I know I can do it, but if you're not in shape or you're not used to it and you can't do a pull-up, it makes it very difficult getting into your kayak. Okay, it's wobbly around, there's waves as you can see, and it's a lot of body weight that you're kind of thrust up. So it's a lot more efficient to get your body up on top of the water by kicking and pushing the kayak, and then a all-in-one motion, pull the kayak, you towards the kayak, while you're kicking, get that momentum up, and then just basically lift yourself onto the top of the kayak. Once you're up there, just keep your balance, rotate your butt, and you're all good. So, nothing to do now but get all right, wet. We're going in. I'm gonna put you on my head, and then I've got my other camera facing down so you can see the top version. So, let's go. All right, we're in the water. Don't panic. Take a breath. Take your time if you had to uh, right your kayak, okay? Now we're gonna get perpendicular. You can hold on to it, okay? My uh, legs are up because I'm pushing the kayak. I'm basically kicking with my legs, so I'm perpendicular. I can even wait for a wave to push me up, but I'm just gonna go for it. Now that my torso's up, I'm in pretty good condition. My legs are floating, so I could just up and flip myself on, or I could roll myself, so I could just grab the handle. And, uh, climb on in. And that's the way you and do I'm it. I'm gonna do one more time, just in fluid on one motion. So in case I go over. Getting ready my hands there, push in, on one motion.
All right, so that is my re-entry certification for uh, 2017. I think I'm pretty good, so. Uh, but I will do another video using my uh, Tarpon 140 since that's a more of a standard kayak people would use, but same basic system. You do have to kind of control your balance because it'll be a little bit more wobbly, but otherwise, I uh, hope that helps people. I uh, hope people will go out and uh, test themselves. If you can't get back in your kayak, I would highly suggest that you don't go in the blue water, salt water stuff, stay near shore where you could stand up if you fall in. Uh, otherwise, hope that helps. Thanks for watching and uh, check you guys out in 2017.